I was curious as to whether or not these new types of wireless microphones are toys. Because admittedly, this is not something that's going to say on its product page. I know that this thing is $250, and I know that it's much smaller than its predecessors. This is what two channels of wireless audio reception looked like just a few years ago. It looks like this. They've got their own battery packs to them. They have cables that come out of them. And this is what two channels of audio receiver looks like now. Look at how small this receiver is. This is a dual channel receiver. Not only is it a dual channel receiver, so this is doing all the work of these old receivers that I have over here from, from Sennheiser, but it can also plug directly into the camera. This means that it can be powered directly off of a Sony camera if you buy the mount, and it will transmit the audio digitally to the camera, so there's no additional analog to digital conversion required. And I don't have to care about the quality of the camera's internal preamps or anything like that, or converters or anything like that. Further, it means I don't have to manage three separate sets of batteries. If I have this plugged into my camera, I have to manage my camcorder battery. That's it. Here, I have to manage the battery of the camcorder, the battery of receiver for channel one, the battery of the receiver for channel two. I don't want to do that. My camcorder battery is large enough that it could power this stuff for a very, very long period of time. Either of them, I'd rather just have to deal with one set of batteries, at least with regards to what I'm holding in my hand, not this. And so this is pretty cool as a receiver because it's not only just way smaller and lighter, but it can also plug directly into the camera, be powered by the camera, and be also transmit its audio digitally to the camera. So this is the transmitter that I'll plug my microphone into, but all this does is transmit the audio. It doesn't record it in case the receiver doesn't pick it up. If there's any issues with my wireless signal, I'm screwed. I'm out of audio. What these things do, which is pretty cool, is it records onto an 8 gigabyte memory that's on here before it does the transmission. So it, it records it, then it transmits it, so I have a copy just in case anything happens, which is very useful because, as you saw on the live stream I did last month, there were several pieces of conversation that got cut out because of wireless issues. So it's really nice to be able to have a backup copy, and this does that. This is beautiful. However, it seems too good to be true. Not only is all this stuff really small, but it's also cheap. This thing is 250 bucks. If this thing did every single thing that it said it could do, I would pay $2,500 for it, not 250. But in the product page, while I see that it's 250, it doesn't tell me the answer that I want. Is this a toy or is this a professional piece of equipment? And the only way for me to tell that would be to listen to the quality of the recordings that come out of it. Now, I've looked at a lot of reviews online that go over this, and most of the reviews just do this. You have somebody that clips the microphone. They're not, they're not interested in using this as a transmitter. They just use the microphone that's built into it. They clip it onto themselves. They plug this into their phone or their camera. They say, here's what it sounds like. They walk further away from it to see when it drops out with regards to uh, how much uh, reception you have or how much range you have, and that's it. That's the end of the review. And while that's useful, if you just plan on using this as a cheap-ass microphone that's better than something that's in your phone or better than the audio that's built into your camera if your subject is far away, fair enough. But I wanted to see if this could actually replace these types of setups. And it's not from a money perspective. It's because this is lit literally, as it's advertised, this is more technically capable than everything else out there. The Sennheiser EWDP series does have a recorder built into the transmitter. So you could you just, it records to it itself, which is great. So if there's any issues in the wireless audio transmission, you don't lose your audio. And it also is of pretty high sound quality. However, the receiver is a single channel receiver. So you have to buy two receivers and stack them on top of each other. And now you're back to the situation you have here where you're managing two sets of batteries and you got the cables coming out of it and there's no real nice integration with that Sony MI hot shoe mount that is pretty cool if you want to keep a small rig if you just want something that's easy to run and gun with. Sony makes something that has a dual channel receiver that also transmits its audio digitally to the camera. They make the URX P41D which is great. It has two channels. It connects right in. You don't have to worry about the battery on it. You don't have to have cables sticking out of it. However, this does not have recorders built into the transmitters. So this is not a money thing. Even if you want to spend $1,500 to $2,500 to buy other company solutions, nobody makes something like the DJI Mic 2 or the Saramonic Ultra that just has it all there. Yeah. The one question is, is this professional or is it a toy? So what I want to do is I'm going to play you some audio recordings that I made while I was troubleshooting and found out the hard way that what is not on the product page that it is a toy. And to be clear, at $250, I have no right to ask this thing to not be a toy. I'm not criticizing in that regard. This setup over here when I got it was $600 for those two receivers. That's 600 for two receivers. When I bought my transmitters, it was another uh, $600 for that. So that was $1,200 right there to get that. And then if I wanna buy recorders, these recorders are anywhere from $100 to $300. So to have two recorders plus that, you're looking at $1,400 to $1,800 to have that setup. We have a recorder, it has several transmitters, several receivers, and this thing's 250. I'm not mad at it for that. I just want to make the point that like this is not this is not in any way a fair comparison. I'm just answering the question.
is it a toy? So I'm going to play you back a lot of the audio recordings that I made while I was troubleshooting this. I was not intending to do a review video. Rather, I was trying to figure out what was wrong with my setup or where things were going wrong. So I made a bunch of recordings while I was trying to troubleshoot it before I realized that this product is not for me and this has to go back. And I wanted to share those recordings with you just in case you're the type of audio nerd like me that is curious about this type of stuff so it doesn't go to waste. So that being said, let's try it out. I'm going to plug this Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone along with its fluffy thingy. We don't call it a dead cat on this channel. Mr. Clinton and Blackberry would not be happy. I'm going to have this thing on the microphone and I'm going to use it in a number of different configurations. And I'm going to share those with all of you. First, I'm going to start by playing you the recording of me plugging the Sennheiser MKE 600 directly into my NEX EA50 camcorder. And I'm going to be using the phantom power on the camcorder, not the AA battery in the camera. So I'm going to have the camera have plus 48 volts set to mic and I'm going to have the microphone turn turned off because with phantom power, I will not need anything there. Just so that you have a reference as to what it's supposed to sound like. Now we're going into the Sony camcorder and the gain is similarly matched. I'm getting about minus 25 and now I just got minus 21 when I was loud. I'm about the same 45 degree angle, same seven fingers away from my mouth. The Sony is set to about three on the gain, not five, while it's set to mic input. Next up, I'm going to plug this microphone into the Saramonic. Using its XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable, I'm going to record directly on the Saramonic transmitter and I'm going to play you the sound that came on the Saramonic before we even did any sort of wireless transmission. The microphone is turned on with a brand new 1.5 volt alkaline AA battery so that we're not getting any of the voltage sag at the capsule that'll occur if you use rechargeable batteries that are only 1.2 volts. This is a 1.5 volt battery. The microphone is in the on position and let's see what that sounds like. Test one, two, three. Okay, so I am using the Sennheiser MK600. I am using the battery to power it. It's going into the Sony NEX EA50. The NEX EA50 is set to gain of five. It's on mic input on the Sony. I'm hitting about 26 to, if I'm really loud, maybe minus 21. And I'm about five, six, seven fingers away from my mouth. There's about a 45 degree angle going on here. And this is the Saramonic. I'm gonna compare the Saramonic like it is right now. Then I'm gonna compare that to the Sony camera that's gonna be next. So let's compare this to it just going directly into the Sony camcorder at a gain that is similarly matched. Now we're going into the Sony camcorder and the gain is similarly matched. I'm getting about minus 25 and now I just got minus 21 when I was loud. I'm about the same 45 degree angle, same seven fingers away from my mouth. You likely heard the same thing that I did, which is that this destroys the sound quality coming from this microphone. This microphone, the MK600, even when it is turned on and powered, sounds like shit going into the Saramonic. And we didn't even do the wireless receiver end. We're not even seeing how the wireless transmission is. Just what it did to the sound quality on the internal recorder of the transmitter was horrible. It destroyed this. And this should have been a fairly easy test. This is not a dynamic microphone I'm asking it to power. It's a condenser, which is not going to require as much amplification. And more importantly, I did turn the microphone on so the AA battery, which is 1.5 volts and fresh, was powering that condenser capsule. This should not have sounded that bad. Now, it is likely that this is not a fully fair comparison because the Sony NEX EA50 is offering 48 volts of phantom power to this microphone. And here, when I'm using the Saramonic, it's only getting 1.5 volts. So to make this a more fair comparison to see if what we're actually testing here is the difference between 1.5 volts and 48 volts powering a Sennheiser MK600 or the difference in the microphone preamps, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off phantom power on the NEX EA50, turn on the microphone's 1.5 volt battery and test it there. I'm gonna put them back and forth so that you can hear the difference between the NEX EA50 with phantom power turned off and 1.5 volts turned on on the microphone and the Saramonic again when it's just plugged directly into this with the battery on. Now, what I'm doing this test for is I'm doing the AA battery you powering the Sennheiser MK600 now instead of using the XO, the phantom power on the NEX EA50. I wanna see how much of that was the Saramonic's transmitter just being a complete Fuck you, phone. I wanted to see how much of that sound being garbage, even when I was using the Saramonic directly to the internal recorder, was it not having phantom power or just the Saramonic being a complete piece of shit. I want to, at the very least, give the devil its due there. Is the internal recording on it really that much worse than just going directly into a camcorder? Or is like, uh, or like, uh, where is the disadvantage happening there? Is it that the camcorder has phantom power? Is that what's making it sound better? Or is it just the Saramonic's a piece of shit? So this is with the AA battery powering the, the Sennheiser MK600. And let's see what this sounds like. And I'm done recording. Hopefully it's, uh, I'm almost kind of hoping that it sounds poor afterwards because I don't like, man, if the Saramonic is really that fucking bad, that would suck. But. Oh, well, one way to find out, right? Test one, two, three. 
Okay, so I am using the Sennheiser MK600. I am using the battery to power it. It's going into the Sony NEX EA50. The NEX EA50 is set to gain of five. It's on mic input on the Sony. I'm hitting about 26 to, if I'm really loud, maybe minus 21. And I'm about five, six, seven fingers away from my mouth. Even when my Sennheiser MK600 is only being powered by its AA battery, it still sounds infinitely better going into the mic preamps of the Sony NEX EA50 than it does into the Saramonic. And this is not like that audiophile microphone preamp thing where people are arguing over an API versus a Neve 31102. This is a difference that you could tell even if you're half deaf. It just destroys the audio quality in a way that even at this price point, I will say it, is inexcusable. That's, it, it's just incompetent, shitty design, in my opinion. Next, what I want to do is I want to see if this is just the norm in this industry. Maybe all of the mic preamps inside these devices just suck, and I just didn't notice it this entire time. So I want to see what the Sennheiser MK600 sounds like when it's going through my system that I have now, which is a SK100 Generation 3 Sennheiser transmitter and an EK100 Generation 3 Sennheiser receiver. Again, not the most fair test because that receiver and transmitter for one channel by itself was going to cost you approximately six to seven hundred dollars. But let's see what it sounds like, and we're going to put that in there. It does not have internal recording like the other one does, so you're stuck with whatever you get on the receiver. If you don't get something good on the receiver, then, well, you're fucked. So you, know, you have to have somebody monitoring your camcorder's output in real time and immediately alerting you the moment there's a problem. And you also have to be in a situation where if you interrupt the person speaking, that they don't kill you, which is why people like those transmitters. Test one, two, three. Okay, so I am using the Sennheiser MK600. I am using the battery to power it. It's going into the Sony NEX EA50. The NEX EA50 is set to gain of five. It's on mic input on the Sony. I'm hitting about 26 to, if I'm really loud, maybe minus 21. And I'm about five, six, seven fingers away from my mouth. In my opinion, the sound that was coming off of the file that was recorded on the Saramonic transmitter was actually worse than the way the sound was when it went through the compander in a Sennheiser analog wireless setup. That's crazy. In my opinion, the Sennheiser was better than the Saramonic, but worse than the sound of the microphone directly into the camera, which is to be expected. But I did not expect the Sennheiser wireless setup to be even anywhere close to what the sound would be plugged directly into the recorder that's built into here. The recorder that is built into this Saramonic transmitter should never be anywhere close to a analog wireless system. It should always be ahead of it. The last thing that I'm going to do here is try and figure out if the problem is with the microphone preamp. If I feed the Saramonic transmitter's recorder a clean line level signal, not a mic level signal, is it better? So I want to see if that's the problem. The problem is not in the transmission portion because that the, the audio is messed up on the internal recording. I want to see if it's happening at the just because it's a bad microphone preamp. And again, that still doesn't make is that's not excusable because even cheap ass micro like a TH AT fifteen twelve that somebody put together on a breadboard that barely knows how to solder in two thousand eight that didn't even clip off the ends of the resistors is still going to sound way better than this piece of shit. But I, what I want to do is I want to see if if I feed it a clean line level signal is it better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the Sennheiser MKE six hundred directly into a high quality recorder the Zoom F3. The Zoom F3 has a line level output on it, and that line level output is going to go directly into the Saramonic. And I'm doing that so that I'm avoiding having to do any sort of real my, uh, mic preamp inside of the Saramonic. All I'm asking this thing to do now is pass along that line level signal without fucking it up. And I'm curious if it has the ability to do that. So let's do that. I'm going to plug my microphone into the Zoom. I'm going to record on the Zoom. I'm also going to record in the Saramonic, and I'm going to play you what it sounds like on each. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today, we're going to be talking into the Zoom F3 field recorder using the Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone. Phantom power is provided by the Zoom F3. The Zoom F3 has a line level output going directly to the Saramonic. I'm looking at the Saramonic receiver, which says that there is no clipping. We are very clearly within a range of gain that is totally okay. We're green. We're not low gain, but we're also not high gain either. Or even better, we're row gain. Row gain. Something I could definitely use. Okay, enough of that. Let's see how this sounds with each of them. I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to play back the recording that came from the Saramonic, and I'm going to play back the recording that came from the Zoom, and I'm going to tell you on screen which one is which, and you tell me what you think. At this point, we are not using this as a wireless system, and we are not even using it as a microphone preamp. We're testing whether or not it has basic competence to not fuck up a line level signal when it's being recorded with a wire. If it can't do that, this thing, at any price, $2,500, $249, or $2.99 belongs in the trash. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. 
after doing that, I learned that it's not as bad. Obviously, it's not as good as the Zoom because it's going through another level of electronics, but it's not nearly as bad as when it's actually trying to amplify the microphone directly. So I decided to try upping the gain a little more to an area that I would not feel comfortable with just to see if the Saramonic performs better as a microphone preamp when I up the gain to where I'm not just in the green at this point. I'm also going into the red a little bit. Before I was in the green, but I thought maybe this just because I didn't use enough gain on it. So let's see if it sounds any different than it did before earlier when I'm using a higher amount of gain on the preamp end and see if this is anywhere near acceptable and we'll go from there. From that test, it doesn't seem like the analog to digital converter inside of here is bad. And it wasn't the wireless part that was giving me issues earlier. It's primarily it being a mic preamp. It's not good as a mic preamp. And I've tried other microphones. I've tried the DPA and some other stuff I have around here. It, it sucks at that. It, so if you wanted to be able to use this with an external microphone, you would have to use a better microphone preamp. Maybe you could use something like the Zoom. You can buy the Zoom H1N on eBay for like 50 bucks. Or there's the high-end stuff like this. But most of you are probably not doing that. But the point is, um, this is a usable device as long as you know what it can and cannot do. I just wish it said on the box, by the way, you should know that the microphone preamp built into it is why it's 250 bucks. Because if you know where the fault is, then you can set it up to, you know, according to what it is you're looking for. So I was hoping to be able to use this thing as a microphone preamp and tra recorder transmitter. It can work as a recorder. It works as a transmitter but the recording will suck unless you feed it a line level signal if you try to use the mic out of either a DPA 4065 or a Sennheiser MK600. It's just going to butcher the sound quality, which is unfortunate. Now, there was a way to tell. There's a spoiler where you could figure out that this thing is a toy before you actually watched and waste your time in a review like this by simply trying out their application. So I was having issues transferring the files to my computer. And a computer with an older Linux kernel that works fine, but on the newer Linux kernels, it would give constant errors. Uh, even though attaching other items like my phone with MTP to my computer, USB devices, all work fine. So I decided to try using their app. And oh my God, the biggest mistake that you could possibly make in the world is installing the application from this piece of shit onto your phone. So the first thing to notice is if I have Wi-Fi off and I open the application, it's going to bitch at me. It's going to tell me like it wants me to go online. The network is abnormal. Please check this and try again. Why I need to be on the internet to use the application for the device that I'm plugging into my phone is beyond me. But yeah, that's a part of it. Now, when you go browse as guest after you finally go online, I'm using a, a burner phone for this. I usually don't use my normal phones when I'm doing this stuff on eBay, uh, doing uh, videos and applications. Now, let's see. This is permission request. It wants permissions. And that's not the issue. The issue is not the permissions. It's the fact that the application itself is actually filled with ads. So it's going to bitch about permissions, but then not tell me which ones it wants. Because uh, here we go. Permission what? Permission request open. Allow. Okay. So it's giving me advertisements for the Blink Me. There's an advertisement here for what looks like a fucking gimbal. Uh, this is th this application is literally advertising to me other crap that they can buy. So I wanted to connect this app, this thing, just to just to mess with the settings on these devices. And the moment that you install the application, it starts advertising its other fucking products to you. That alone, before you do anything else here, lets you know that buying something from Saramonic, they think you're a dumbass. And admittedly, I am a dumbass because I didn't download the fucking app. Application. I don't usually like to use devices like this that have applications associated with them because it's a pain in the ass and it means that they can take it away at any given time. However, I have now learned something that I should, on a burner phone, download the applications that are associated with these type of devices just to get an idea of whether or not what I'm buying is a toy. Because rather than go through all this stuff and learn about mic level versus line level signal quality into its analog to digital converter and all this other crap, I didn't have to waste any time on that. I could have just downloaded their application and realized that this is not a device that I would ever want to purchase because it is, as its app makes it appear, a toy. Hopefully this was helpful to you in deciding whether to purchase this. Most likely there are nobody out there besides maybe one or two other people that have the same crazy psycho use case I do of wanting to have a dual channel receiver that's powered off of a Sony hot shoe mount that has recording in the transmitter. If you're crazy like I am and actually wanted to know if this device does exactly that, well, now you know. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.